I'm sure uh, you have not missed the earlier part. Uh, it got uh, disconnected. But we can always uh, go back a little just to recap. So actually, the, the fascination, what we fasc get fascinated with butterflies are the colors. But you'll be surprised that butterflies have got two types of colors. One are the colors which actually they have. Like you see here on the left side, we have the glassy blue bottle with the blue colors. And those are the colors there are there on the on the scales. But there are some of the shining colors, what you see, are actually the structural colors. And they don't really exist as uh, uh, colors there as a pigment. But they are basically seen, seen in the inverted commas. Because just as you see uh, the colors of the soap bubbles, or you see colors on the petrol on water. So those are the uh, structural colors you cause, is caused by the refraction of light. And here is a, on the right, you have the common peacock with the iridescent colors. And those are basically the structural colors. They don't exist, but they're caused by the light. Of course, colors you see because of the light also. But here, it's a refraction. And sometimes at different angles, you see different colors. You know, slightly green, slightly blue, or slightly yellow. So that kind of uh, refraction is given by the structural uh, certain ridges in the scale that gives this kind of uh, light wavelengths to us. The evolution of butterflies, of course, of course um, they come with the evolution of flowers, flowering plants. There are ferns and uh, fungi and, other, and there were moths there, but not for butterflies. But with the evolution of flowering plants, the arrival of the flowering plants on this planet brought butterflies too. And that's how you have butterflies who are specialized nectar feeders. Of course, not all, but most of them are nectar feeders. And there are about one. 1,74,250 species of butterflies and moths all around the world recognized by science. And then out of that, 18,000 are butterflies and rest are all moths. You can imagine the kind of uh, diversity you have moths. Moths are a lot more than butterflies. And India is lucky to have around 1,300 plus species of butterflies right from different biodiversity zones. You know, we have so much of diversity. You know, few countries enjoy this kind of diversity, what we have. And butterflies are usually classified by the biologists into six families that we'll see. They're skippers, swallowtails, whites and yellows, blues, judies and punches. And then we have the brush-footed butterflies. Let's see what are those groups. I'll explain you slowly, slowly. Swallowtail butterflies. Of course, they're one of the most handsome butterflies. And they get them, they get their name because of the hind wing being slightly having a tail. As you see, uh, the common rose here with the tail, but the common jay doesn't have. So all swallowtail butterflies don't have that tail, but uh, some do have, and that's how they, this group gets the name, swallowtail butterflies. Swallowtails occur right from Himalayas as Apollos to the sea levels of different kind of butterflies you see. So they're quite varied, varied and in different habitats they occur. And then we have the skippers. You have flats with spread wings, and then we have the swifts and bobs and hoppers with closed wings. And these are more drab butterflies, more moth-like butterflies. But uh, they're very much, and, and they're more of so forest dwellers than city dwellers. So you're likely to see them more in forested areas than in cities. But yes, for cities too have some of these uh, skippers. And then we come to the whites and yellow, the tiny, the grass yellow you see often see on the roadside, or the Jezebel you see in the middle of the road flying slowly along the trees where the parasitic host plant grows. So these are the whites and yellows butterflies. And then we have the blues. These are small butterflies. Most of them are as small as their little fingernails. But of course, all are not blues, uh, as uh, the, many of them have the upper side blue. That's why their uh, group has been given name blues. But otherwise, they come in a varied colors and shapes too. And then we have the judies and punches. Of course, South India doesn't have uh, so many uh, Punches or judies, we have got a, mainly the, the uh, plum judy, and then we have the straight judy. The, the band is more straighter, so we call it straight judy that occurs slightly uh, in the extreme south, that is in Kerala, and then we have in, in northeast. But the the plum judy, which is most common el elsewhere, is usually a very shade loving uh, butterfly found among, you know, flitting among with half open wings. That's typical of a plum judy and goes for bird droppings and fallen fruits. Punches, you'll see a lot of punches in the Himalayas and Northeast. That's a land for punches and punchinellos. And 
uh, that's where you see most most of the species in in the Himalayan region and as well northeast region. And then come the brush-footed butterflies. You know, butterfly we call them brush brush-footed because you know, being an insect, they've got six legs, but the front pair of legs are short, and they have hair, brush-like hair that they use to clean up their antenna and eyes. So that's four legs, not on six legs, and that's why they're called brush-footed butterflies. That's a baronet and the handsome gaudy baron on the right now you see the kind of why we have so many butterflies because we have so much of diverse habitats we have 10 biogeographic zones and india is one of 17 of the mega diverse countries that support two-thirds of the world's biological resources and we have two biodiversity hotspots the northeast and the western cuts you know it's a it's a mega diverse country because we have lions, tigers, elephants, rhinos, this kind of, you know, mega animals we have. So this kind of flagship species we have and the butterflies too range right from Kaisere Hind to the tiny you know, grass jewel. So you can imagine that kind of diversity we have. So I begin my journey with Trans Himalaya, you know, beyond Himalayas. Look at the country. It's not uh, what you see, the Himalayas, you know, no conifer trees no junipers but all barren almost a cold desert but here also i actually went there to search for a butterfly that flies at this high altitude about ten thousand feet let's see what was that butterfly but of course we have to get used to the stare in the desert like and that's the indus river flowing in the um uh, the cold desert and even the lakes there are brackish you know, they're not freshwater lakes, but some of the brackish possibly that tells you the history of the Himalayas that once upon a time Himalayas possibly was under the sea and that you might find sometimes you even find those fossils of the shells there. And this lakes are brackish that they're salty to taste. That's a Somori lake. A lot of migratory birds, they breed around this lake. And of course, the top predator there is not tiger, but a snow leopard, the highly specialized predator living at that high altitude where the temperature you know, drops below minus. And of course, there are camels too. And there are double hemp camels in a desert. Imagine a desert in the Himalayas, the Nubra Valley. Amazing in that. This is the, these are the passes where the Mongolian traders used to come. And even the invaders that came to India, one of those passes that actually brought in trade and invasion to India. Because India has been always uh, a fertile country and rich country and today also it is and there you see this beautiful handsome kiangs or the, the wild ass tibetan wild ass of course they're more like horses very handsome and they gallop at a speed where you can't match and you try to run there at, at that altitude of ten thousand feet plus you'll go out of breath possibly head up with end up with headache and nausea because it's the air is very fine but they are so well adapted these are endangered now but they're actually the, the flora is very sparse and grassy and you see, you know, succulent like these kind of uh, uh, vegetation grows. And there I was looking for a butterfly. Let's see what butterfly I was looking for. It, the, it was almost barren. And there I was looking for this butterfly, the Apollos. And I found common red Apollo and the regal Apollo. Both of them I found, I was lucky to see them at that altitude at 10,000 feet. And red Apollo I found at 15,000 feet. On the Khardungla Pass, which is the highest motorable road on the world, in the world. And that's what I, I was so excited when I got this finally. I was looking for and these are swallow tails. Why? Though they don't have the they don't have the hind wings, you know, with the tails, but they're caterpillars. You know, all swallowtail caterpillars have, have got a special gland called osmetarium. You know, if you happen to touch a swallowtail caterpillar, the orange organ comes out. It's a, it's a basically gland that gives out insect repellent to ward off the parasitic flies, parasitic wasps. And this is possibly the first insect which has got an insect repellent to repel insects, insect attack like war, parasitic wasp and flies on its caterpillars. And this gland is common to all of these volatile caterpillars, including Apollos. And that's why Apollos are included in this family. And of course, the other family I came across the whites and yellows, the large cabbage whites were very much flying all, all around the area. Difficult to see them, but yes. The bath white I found on the thistle. Thistle is a plant where it usually grows in a rubbish places and neglected places. But that's a plant. If you stand there, you are sure to get butterflies. That's the best plant to 
stand and wait patiently and butterfly just come and flock around that plant when it's flowering it's an amazing plant the thistle the thorny plant and, uh, and the flowers also too are thorny but butterflies come for nectar they flock around it and i found some of the small blues there the golden copper very much found at that high altitude about 10000 feet and the common meadow blue these are the butterflies which are paleartic you know which are found in the europe like uh, climatic conditions so the butterflies are different not the which we find in the plains of india they are different and more you know aligned to the paleartic region of europe and uh, eurasia and the nymphalids the brushwood butterflies that's a high brown silver spot and the tortoise shell of course we have the indian tortoise shell also but this is ladak tortoise shell which is found only at that high altitude region it is much smaller butterfly and the wing tips are not very pointed that is very different from the indian tortoise shell and it's more endemic to the high altitude and then we cross over to himalayas the wetter part of himalayas but you see the now you see the conifers and the tall trees but the but the vegetation is still different here you know the trees don't have the broad leaves they are conifers small leaves because they have to protect against the cold and the extreme weather the forest is different the animals are different let's see what you see in this habitat and if you happen to go now in himalayas especially from april or march end onwards up to july you see the entire himalaya ablaze with this beautiful rhododendron flowers and we have different species and different colors of rhododendrons all across from kashmir to arunachal pradesh and of course so many wild flowers like there's just not one valley of flower but the several meadows are there in the himalayas that have rights of of these flowers and flowering areas and that's a balsam there balsam grows in mumbai also and balsam grows in himalayas also so different species are there and that's a himalayan black bear it's not a sloth bear but himalayan black bear just to indicate what kind of species are found in that region you know we are traveling different regions different habitat different animals and different butterflies and here also i got skippers the flat the but this is a spotted snow flat look at the you get the common snow flat we didn't have the the dark spots on the white area of the hind wing here you have the dark spots on the hind hind wing white area and then we have the swifts this is a straight swift look at the the spots they arrange on the hind wing in a line straight and as the spots ascend they grow smaller and smaller from right and the base spot is larger and the top spot is smaller than the base spot and they are right in straight line that's how this name straight swift this butterfly gets and we have the himalayan darts and the gray wind hoppers plenty of them and you have to keep on looking in the grasses and the, the low small flowers and you you will be discovering lot of butterflies like the small ones and there also at 10000 feet i got this common blue apple another the third apple i got this was not in ladakh but in the great himalayan national park in a, near kulu manali and another one which is very common was the yellow swallowtail which is found in europe also in russia if you go to central asia in russian region you see these butterflies and they are different subspecies of course but the common name is usually the common yellow swallowtail very commonly reared in europe and in britain and it's found in the himalayan region also a very handsome butterfly in fact and there i found this beautiful red bodied swallowtails the common windmill and the great windmill very handsome and the, the kind of they fly very slowly gently because they are protected why because they harbor the distasteful toxins of the plant which they ate during the caterpillar stage and that's why birds don't touch them they don't, they don't dare to attack possibly they must have made a mistake by attacking this butterflies and they learned the lesson the hard way of not to attack this butterfly because they can give a bad stomach a nausea and vomiting that's how they learn the lesson but you know the idea is not to kill your predator it to educate your predator and never again the bird will touch a butterfly that looks like this and that's the advantage the other butterflies take and they mimic these butterflies and they also escape being eaten by the birds that's a mimicry in butterflies and the again we come back to whites and yellows that's a great black queen again a himalayan butterfly on thistle and that the common brimstone common brimstone you'll find in europe also in england and that's how the butterfly the butter colored fly we got the name from this common brimstone because this is the first butterfly to fly with the advent of spring in in europe and britain you know winters are very drab and cold and they always wait for those signs of spring and this is the first butterfly that you see flying around that's a that brings up cheers to the uh, people there and that's a butter color fly and we got that butterfly as a name 
And along the Himalayan meadows, you'll see this clouded yellows, plenty of different colors. There are dark clouded yellows and pale clouded yellows, plenty. And they fly at very fast speed, rarely stopping for a flower or two. And otherwise, they're usually flying or basking. Basking also very rarely and very difficult to frame them in that, those high altitudes. And then we have some of the blues. You have the large hedge blues, plenty of varieties. The hedge blues varieties you see in Himalayas and the North is amazing. And there's the orange bordered Argus. Again, these are small butterflies, as small as your little fingers' nails. So it's not all butterflies are as pretty or brightly colored because they live in a different habitat and they live among the rocks. And they have to match with the rocks. That's why they have the, the white edged rock brown leaves among the rocks. And that's why they have this kind of pattern that merges and makes them almost invisible among the rocks. Or the satyrs. And you know, it's a strange watching satyrs basking. Usually, you know, you see butterflies basking in the sun with the wings open. But this butterfly, the satyr, actually, it tilts on one side without opening the wings. It tilts on left or same to the right. And that's how he is basking in the sun, but never opens his wings like the other butterflies. Quite funny. And then we have the beaks, the club beak and the common beak. Cub. Of course, in South India also, we find them and in on the hills and as as close as Mumbai, we have certain areas in Alibag and in Mathiran, uh, the, these beaks are found. But mainly the region is high altitude of the Nilgiris and in Himalaya. That's the main region for these um, uh, butterflies. And they are called beak because their mouth part is, is protruded like a beak-like structure. That's why they're called the beaks. It's, they are found in Europe also. And then we come to the subtropical forest. Now you see the flora is changing, the, the leaves are broader. Let's see what animals are found in this forest. And that's the red panda. Now the animals will change, the, the forest is changing, the butterflies will change. Let's explore what kind of butterflies. The skippers here are different, much colorful now. And you have the large flats here and the olets. Olets are beautiful, handsome butterflies. And you'll be surprised that these skipper butterflies are active early morning or late evening. In fact, recently I was in Namdafa, Arunachal Pradesh for the Namdafa butterfly meet and we were just returning and suddenly Amit Gogoi, uh, you know, asked to stop the vehicle and he pointed out in the on the cement um, in a structure, there was one small butterfly, he prospered, we couldn't see it and then we all jumped out and we saw the small green olet. my god, we were all excited and we just started butter photographing like crazy. I had not, it was a lifer for me also. So, and that was almost, you know, the light was fading, it's evening, but that's the time when these butterflies are active, so skippers, early in the morning or maybe in the evenings. And then you have the beautiful sapphires. You happen to be in Himalaya, especially uh, from uh, Uttaranchal up to Sikkim and then up to Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland also, of course, some of these skippers, these uh, sapphires are beautiful. And these are again structural colors. They're not real colors, but structural colors. So maybe in the, at certain angles, they just become almost dark and certain angles you see the beautiful iridescent, the brilliant blues and the golden. The females look different, you know, they don't have this brilliant colors. They are more uh, brown with orange border. And then we have the other nymphalid, the eastern courtiers. Look at the male. The male is much brighter and, and is more often seen than the female. Female is usually, you know, more in the, the forest and more withdrawn and usually near the host plant, not as uh, uh, conspicuous as the male. And then we have the last stripe, uh, silver stripe, very handsome butterfly. And the Indian purple emperor, really the colors our structure and every angle will give a kind of different colors, different in the, the shades of blue and whites. Now we come to foothills of Himalayas. Let's see what we have in this forest. It's a different forest and this is the Ramganga River and we are in the Corbett National Park. And the Karyal, the fish eating crocodile. We have, of course, we have got saltwater crocodile, the largest. And then we have the mugger also. And this is the fish eating crocodile. It's endangered too. And elephants. Now you can start seeing elephants. You know, you, you, you couldn't see elephants up there in the Himalayas, but now you can see. And elephants require a huge forest because they require a lot to eat and they have to keep on moving. If they stay at one place, they might destroy the forest. So to have elephants, you need to really have healthy forest. In Maharashtra, we don't have elephants. Why? Nobody kill them. But we don't have that kind of forest to afford elephants. We are too poor to afford elephants. Now it's Tarai. Tarai is on the foothills of Himalayas. And you can see the Silk cotton, there also silk cotton, Sayadris in the Western Ghats also. And there we have on the Bhutan and Assam border is a lovely golden langur, which was discovered in 1957 by EPG, uh, English tea planter who was a conservationist also. That's a very handsome langur, much docile than the usual common langur you see. 
and rhino of course in the northeast is is the mascot of assam and uh, that's again the kind of diversity you see in in northeast is amazing you have 900 species plus it's like mecca for me you know every every year i have to be there with northeast recently i was there in the marsh and that makes my year actually and orchids the land of orchids and dancing butterflies the kind of in the, especially in this season if you go unfortunately because of covid we can't really move or to, touring around is all we are missing all that fun but otherwise this place is a land of orchids and dancing butterflies and the diversity you see north is an amazing is the jewel of india and the forest so much dense and dark forest are possibly rare and possible this is what we have to protect the arunachal forests are also un- in danger with so many developmental projects are coming the dams are coming and many of them are going to drown this forest and we have to protect them you know we need development but development has to be sustainable you can't just keep on drowning uh, diversity and the kind of ecosystem that are important for su- as a support as a life support system this this is our wealth we have to use them very sustainably and that's where you can see hornbills Hornbills require huge trees because they are not crows who live, who make nest on the tree, but they make nest inside the tree. That's the reason they have to have huge trees to make the bowl, the nest in the in the bark in the bowl. There are also wonderful varieties of skippers, just like the all king. All kings found in the Western Ghats also, and all kings are found a lot of a variety of horn, all kings are found in the northeast. And then we have the great swift, like we have the conjoined swift here in. western guard there we have the great swift which they look almost similar and of course the dragon tails you know i had when i read read my uh, first butterfly book the winter blight book in bnhs library and i saw these dragon tails photographs i was so fascinated and i also fantasize of you know some day going there and photographing them and when finally when i went there you know for the first time in namda farnashal i saw them i was excited i was shaking with excitement and shashank davi was with me and we were we i just went crazy photographing this dragon tail because it was my a dream to photograph this beautiful butterfly the dragon tails and we have white dragon tails and we have the green dragon tails so here you have on the right is a green dragon tail which i photographed in in nagaland and of course we have some of the rare butterflies which are protected under the wildlife protection act just like lion and tigers that's bhutan glory and kaiser hin i don't have the photograph of kaiser hin but uh, uh i it's on a wish list and i have to see it another one is of course a beautiful butterfly the five bar sort another beauty we have so many of those beauties are across the northeast and the western ghats of these uh, especially the five bars are found both in western ghats as well as uh, in the northeast and then we have more of these follow tails like the chain sort tails which looks like a spot sort tail which if you find in the mainland in the main the plains of india and the vein jays the common jays the you know, we are different and the blue bottles then we have the birdwing butterfly birdwing butterfly there we have the golden birdwing and we have common birdwing and in south india we have the southern birdwing which is the largest birdwing that's the different this is the golden birdwing and you see the dusting on the on the on this border the black dusting that is how you id a golden birdwing the common birdwing will not the border will be clear of this dust no dusting that's a common bird wing with dusting it's a golden bird wing and the females look different the female is much larger and then we have the jezebels and we have the saw toots who who mimic jezebel jezebels are distasteful and jezebels usually lay eggs on the parasitic mistletoes that grow on mango and other plants and they are distasteful birds only jezebel and they are brightly colored those beautiful colors are actually warning colors that keep off the predators like birds and birds soon learn to keep up from these beautiful or brightly colored butterflies and these saw toots have evolved to look like jezebels because they can't they have not adapted to digest the the poisonous plants as a caterpillar but they have adapted to have these colors over the years the nature is a beautiful sculptor and then we have the small blues like the like the silver lines we have the long banded silver lines and then we have the club silver line and look at the false head and false antenna at the rear end so that's how they they divert the predator's attention to the less vulnerable part of the body you know losing bits of tail it doesn't affect the butterfly and life of 3 4 weeks is good enough for them to survive and that's how the butterfly deflects his uh, at- attack on the less vulnerable part of the body by having this decoy or you know and these are the punches here on the right 
like we have the judies in the western ghats we have judies and punches and punchinellos in the northeast very pretty butterflies and then we again back come back to the nymphalids or the brush footed you have the crows of course crows are dark and brown here but in northeast there are brilliant blues when they open the wing you see the brilliant blue the different kinds of blue crows there and then we have the palm flies and one of the palm fly that mimics the jezebel and that's so called it's called jezebel palm fly palm flies are eaten by birds but usually when they mimic like a look like a jezebel the birds keep off by looking at the bright color mistaking for a distasteful jezebel because they must have learned in a hard way to keep off from these brightly colored butterflies butterflies don't really kill their predators but they teach them a lesson and that's a lesson is good enough for them to they keep off from these distasteful species and some butterflies occur in the dark dense forest especially the striped regular and the jungle glory and only when they fly off you can see the beautiful brilliant blue that's where you can see a jungle glory otherwise it will go and sit among the dry leaves you'll not see them and these are and some of the butterflies the evening browns and browns they they don't are not the butterflies of the open grassy patches but they they need a different habitat of dark dense forest you know different habitats are preferred by different butterflies and these are the butterflies of the dark dense forest and now we come to the mangroves the mangroves of can you guess is it because in mumbai also we have got mangroves and in the south also there are plenty of mangroves but these are mangroves have got tiger and that's sundarbans but of course i didn't go to see tiger in sundarbans i went for another tiger and i am going to show you which, which tiger i went for and that's the time this tiger came out I, we were actually sitting in a boat because in sundarbans you're not allowed to walk and they because the, the tigers are different and they look at you like you're 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 sort of a dish of gulab jamun actually looking at you with big eyes so you keep a safe distance but this tiger came for a deer hunt actually it almost got a deer but this time the deer escaped you know tigers have to really work hard for their breakfast or lunch and this time the deer was lucky but i went for this tiger the white tiger the white tiger is a butterfly that looks like a striped tiger but found only in the west bengal in the mangrove region and then the odisha odisha or orissa uh, where in the bidar kanika and other areas in the bordering areas where the mangroves are there this is a resident endemic and confined only to the mangrove regions of odisha and west bengal the sundarban the sundarban is the best place to photograph them but of course sundarbans and and both would bidar kanika you have large crocodiles these are the salt water crocodile they can grow as large as 25 plus or 25 feet but and this is you know about just just away 10 feet away from us basking in the sun that's the beauty of india you know the kind of wildlife you see in india is possibly rarely you see in other parts of the world and the monitor lizard that's a water monitor varanus salvator huge monitor and that's found in the western in the we have the common monitor here across india then we have the golden monitor we have the desert monitor yellow monitor and we have the desert monitor but this monitor is found only in the uh, mangroves of odisha and uh, sundarbans and of course bird life bird life is amazing in sundarbans with the brown winged kingfishers and the collared kingfishers and nothing else with the crabs the crabs are so amazing and these are the fiddler crabs you know trying to fight off a rival from his territory and then we from from the from the east coast we come to the west in you know, a bordering pakistan that's a desert of thar and you know the desert has got some butterflies you know amazing place and so much of life you really go and search deserts desert has a unique wildlife which is specially adapted to survive in this harsh conditions the arabs that's a large arab the large salmon arab we have small small salmon arab which is found along the mangrove regions and even in the uh, rajasthan and up regions also and then we have the white arabs also and then we have the blue spotted arab in rajasthan and gujarat in the uh, run in the deserts fine so we have the arabs and we have other like the small orange tip that's again another butterfly with the uh, affinity for arid regions not in wet places like mumbai but or western ghats but more in the arid region you can find these beautiful tiny butterflies and now we come to the sal forest a tall sal that's standing and it's a land of the tiger you know india is the only place where you can see tiger at 10 feet nowhere in the world nowhere in the world you'll see a tiger at 10 feet in open gypsy and that's the monopoly of india and the credit goes to the forest department of india for saving this 
beautiful handsome animal of forest and this is the ap apex animal the flagship animal that presence of this animal indicates that ecosystem is all is well and that is happens only in india and we should be proud of it because elsewhere tigers have been shot killed and eaten up all were in malaysia thailand and other places in russia also the hunted many times but here in india you can see at 10 feet amazing you know and all the people that have you ever looked into tiger's eyes try it you'll never be the same again <laughs> and of course birds along the watching and these are the you know these are insectivorous birds and they eat butterflies too and look at the bills they are not those short bills for green eating but and we surprised that majority of birds do feed on insects even the sparrows when they're raising a brood they feed on insects they don't want a high protein diet for the kids so birds are very important to control pest species also in the farmland and to reduce their in use of pesticides and look at that the spot so tails so many of them what are doing on a, on a mud patch they are collecting salts and these are all males that they are collecting dowry because you know from the flower nectar they don't get the salts then who will collect the salts the males here are the males who are wiving and, and competing to get as much salt as possible because it's the saltiest male that gets a female and she will choose the the guy who has got the most of the salts and that's how they're wiving and these salts the male passes to the female during the mating time to make the eggs viable so that's why that's all the rush for salts now we come to the western ghats another system very important ecosystem just not for birds and butterflies for us human beings especially because it is a catchment area for several rivers you know rivers are born and the clouds that come from the arabian sea are blocked here and the rivers are born out of this rain that is caught by the western ghats and the kind of diversity it has is nowhere found in the world because it's endemic the giant squirrel the state animal of maharashtra again a canopy dweller it it will there it will there as long as the forest is there the trees are there it is not a squirrel that live on ground in bare ground and then we have the prince of jungle of course you can find the leopard in mumbai also right in the municipal area in the national park and uh, that's another tiger you see very commonly that a striped tiger and these are all milkweed butterflies and they are brightly colored and birds soon learn to keep up from these distasteful species and they usually fly slowly to make the predators have a good look at it and let them not make mistake of attacking this distasteful species and then we have the largest butterfly in india the female of the southern bird wing southern bird wing is found in the western ghats south of maharashtra right from amboli onwards or chipun onwards you will start finding but uh, southern bird wing up to kerala amazing butterflies the female is much larger about 190 mm from wing tip to wing tip male is the smaller than female and then we have the even smallest that's a small grass jewel it's almost 12 mm 12 to 14 mm and it's very small as small as a little finger even smaller than a little finger's nail and that makes it the smallest butterfly in india and now we have the commander commander is another handsome butterfly and these names are given by the british officers you know who were who came to india in the british times and british rule and they were posted here and that was a time when you know butterfly collecting butterfly studying was a hobby then i just like you collect stamps and that's the time they studied also the name butterflies and that's a common name we still use and those names were published by evans and their names were published by winter blythe and today bnh is also and this uh, both books the winter blythe book and the evans book was published by bnhs and these names are still used as a common recognized world over uh, by the butterfly specialists another beautiful butterfly the common the malabar banded peacock look at the colors and that's again an endemic species found only in the western cards so this is what is very the specialities of western cards and then we have the tree nymph we have tree nymph in the malabar tree nymph found in the western cards south of maharashtra and then we have the andaman tree nymph and then we have another tree in sundarbans too so we have three tree nymphs in india but this is the most commonly seen uh, in the western ghats and another uh, place to see tree nymph is andaman the sundarban tree nymph is rather elusive i've been there to seven times in search of the sundarban tree nymph but i never found now we come to andaman andaman is a place where islands and and species have been isolated for years and that has possibly caused some of the species to to evolve into a subspecies into a different species in 
and i went to andamans to find a species which is endemic only to andaman islands found only in andamans that was this andaman sword tail a very handsome species looks like a five bar sword tail but it's not five bar it's andaman sword tail evolved out of isolation a different species and i found it i was lucky to find it a very handsome species and another one was uh, andaman club tail another beautiful species found only in andamans andaman is a place where you can see wildlife on the land and you just put a snorkel and go in the water is amazing in water with corals and fishes and so many of diversity below the water also and that's a painted jezebel painted jezebel is found in andamans and even northeast and even western maharashtra eastern maharashtra and where the eastern ghats also you'll see the painted jezebel in in otherwise you can see the common jezebel but this jezebel is different look at the orange spot they are not square or black bordered like the common jezebel you know the best the best part is butterflies have to survive when they can't really fly is the pupal stage you know caterpillars sometimes have camouflage and they can move also to dry they can drop down also but the pupa can't and that's the time they have to remain invisible invisible to that time when the when the butterfly is, is is forming within the pupal case and this is how the common mime remains invisible by looking like a dry twig you can just look at the dry twig these two are dry twig and the top one is a pupa amazing you know nature sculpts so well that out of selection this design has evolved to survive and successful design but of course some butterflies display their colors in the pupal stage also to keep off to warn predators keep off otherwise you will have a bad stomach or a bad nausea and birds soon learn in hard way and learn to keep off from these brightly colored pupae this is a crow pupa very beautiful shining it looks like a earring very pretty of course some caterpillars will remain within the fleshy leaves of calancho like the red piero and will be not seen from the top also and bottom also on the underside also and that's how they remain invisible and they remain within the leaf this way and, and only with pupation they come out that's a red piero and of course the common barren look at it it's almost invisible on a mango leaf because this feather like structure the fish bone like structure is there actually eliminates shadow it's a ground hugging structure ground hugging feather like structure is no shadow no shadow then you can't be seen this design is also adopted by the army and the military designs for the military structures to create no shadows no shadows mean you cannot be detected that's a strategy for the barren butterfly and it remains in us along with the midrib to match with the yellow line on his back and that's how it remains invisible during the day when most of the hungry birds are active and that's another classic example of how nature sculpts the oak leaf is a perfect dry leaf a sculpted into perfect dry leaf and when it opens the beautiful this is orange oak leaf and you see the blue oak leaf in the southern uh, peninsula uh, in the western ghats mainly you know basically st the the strategy is when this butterfly is attacked it flies off you know showing off the blue orange blue 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 color and then suddenly it drops down in among the dry, dry leaves and becomes another leaf and the bird is still searching for a blue color butterfly it will not see because it closes its wings and become another leaf that's a very simple strategy here here i am there and here here i'm not and the silver line here you have a decoy we got a false head and false antenna at the other end the less vulnerable part of the body so your head and uh, you know especially predators are a program to attack the head first and you have a false head and false antenna so you uh, deflect the predator attention or attack And of course, there are some butterflies like the browns, the bush browns, and the evening browns have the false head, false eye-like pattern that deflects the attention to a less vulnerable part of the body. That's the wing edges, and losing wing edges doesn't affect the butterfly's life. You know, that's hardly three to four weeks, and that's good enough for the butterfly to survive and breed. Of course, butterfly life is not simple. Actually, you know, every day it's not just going to office or schools and it's coming home. but it's you know every corner there is a lizard waiting a frog waiting or a toad waiting or the specialized wasps catching their their caterpillars and stinging them to to paralyze them and there are birds too and there are some specialized wasps which actually inject their eggs inside the caterpillar's body like this you see that the pupae are formed outside that's a parasitic wasp or the nawab caterpillar on the right you see the cotton like structure of the pupae that has come out from the doomed caterpillar and here is a solitary caterpillar i was talking about osmeterium gland that's a red orange gland that comes out when alarmed and gives out a, a insect repellent it repels the insect attack the wasp attack and that's the first insect repellent i tell made by an insect and that's how uh, they repel the uh, wasp attack by the parasitic wasp that's a caterpillar of a red helen and spiders too 
catch butterflies. So life of butterflies is not as easy or joyful as you see. They have their own issues and own problems. And birds, birds are specialized. This is the, these are you know specialized insect insectivorous birds. They don't eat grains. They eat only insects. And look at the bills. The bills are different. The tickles flycatcher here. Yeah, that was the monarch. Look at the bills. They are specialized and they are uh, adapted and so And that's why the birds are very important in the agriculture because they keep the insect population down. And you can use the less pesticide insect. So you have to encourage birds to nest around your farms and orchards. So you have birds to control the insect population, not the pesticides. Because pesticides don't kill insects. Pesticides can only harm us, finally. And of course, the major harm of to butterflies is the loss of habitats. It's not the butterfly trade or killing of butterflies, but it's basically the loss of habitat. That is basically harmful to each and every animal because that affects the population because habitat is lost. That's where we have to protect. Of course, we have a good system of national parks and nas uh, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. But you otherwise have to also protect other forests which are not protected because those are those are very vital to keep the biodiversity intact and the corridors between protected forests. And of course, coming to joy of butterflies, as I was talking, you know, uh, what I have been enjoying the joy of butterflies, especially with the advent of Facebook, actually, you know, with so many groups forming. That was again another uh, platform where we could really meet people, like-minded people. We meet, and we uh, we have been going for the butterfly meets that occur every year. Like last year, it was this year. It was in uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Namdafa. Before that, they were in Assam and in Zero. So every year we meet, and you can see the butterfly crazy people. You'll never see those people rolling on the ground in the muck with their best of the clothes or best. Uh, Otherwise, they'll never do that. But here you'll see rolling in the muck for the butterflies. And the kind of thrill and the, and the joy they get is amazing. You'll never, it's something that is totally, uh, it's a speciality of being in, in butterflying. It's, it's a hobby that is something that I have been pa passionately pursuing. And we have so many of my friends and like minded people who have been crazy photographing butterflies. And it's not only just. Uh, you know, it's it's coming to youngsters and, you know, butterfly meets and there are different butterfly parks are coming and gardens are coming and people really enjoy it's a, It's an excellent hobby. And, and the kind of response we are getting from these uh, several butterfly groups on the Facebook, right from and the neighboring countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, Bhutan, Singapore, Hong Kong, American groups are there and international groups are there. So this kind of activity, you can imagine the kind of people who are involved and the kind of joy you get is is immense. Nothing like this. And I also also encourage, I tell pe parents to encourage the children to go into this kind of hobbies, healthy hobbies that make them more creative and occupied. And finally, it is basically, you know, make them fall in love with nature because if you love nature, you will protect them because that is what we need to protect our planet. But that's only one we have. And but it's this forest protecting uh, butterflies not is just a reason because we have to protect the forest and the habitats and these are the systems that support us the clean air and the clean water we need is from the forest and from the rivers from the mountains where the butterflies and birds live and they tell us the health of the habitat and we need to protect it so that it's for our future just not for birds and butterflies for our future let's do that together thank you friends so that was my journey for um, and if you have any questions, you can please um, write to, uh, you can write and share on, um, yeah, we have one question coming from, are the are there any butterfly species which are specific to freshwater wetlands? Not really uh, freshwater, but uh, uh, butterflies do, uh, do like damp places and wet forest there, but they are, and they come for mud puddling also, but there's nothing for a wetland species as such, just like we have wetland birds. They're not really wetland birds, uh, wetland butterflies. Rocky Plato's um, in Western Guards and Coconut Full Bloom in Monsoon. Why don't we see butterflies? Yes, you're right. You know, uh, you'll be surprised that, you know, I went to Valley of Flowers also. And now you saw about a cast lake, like we have these rocky plateaus with full of flowers. They're so flowering, it's, it's amazing colors. But you will not see butterflies there, even Valley of Flowers. Why? Because those flowers are not butterfly flowers. You know, every flower has got its pollinator. So those flowers are different flowers and they attract bees and flies and other like we have got bat flowers, we have got bird flowers, we have got moth flowers and butterfly flowers. So those flowers, what you see on the plateaus are not butterfly flowers. 
So, like the bat flowers, you always flower, flower in the evening, and the moth flowers also flower, and the tubular long and the white in colors, more more fragrance is there. So, there are different adaptation for different each. They're tailor made for each other. That's why you don't see the flowers on in the valley of flowers. You see the flowers, but you don't see butterflies because those are those are not butterfly flowers. Okay. So, friends, you can write your and questions, and basically, uh, I would love to. Um, uh, see you on the we are, we are certain courses also we are starting with butterfly courses you want to learn more about butterflies with me you can join these courses which are on the i nature watch foundation and uh, now you can join as a free you can you can have a free, free trial trail trial also you can join as and try it out if you like it you can join it you can uh, join it as a trial uh, so uh, welcome friends and do do keep in touch and do share your uh, questions with me or any information about butterflies i'm always there on facebook Thank you, friends. Have a nice time and happy butterflying.